This is section 7.1, part B, sampling variability. How can X bar, based on the sample of only a few of the 117 million American households, be an accurate estimate of mu, which is the mean for the entire population? After all, a second random sample taken at the same time would choose different households and likely produce a different value of X bar. This basic fact is called sampling variability. The value of a statistic varies in repeated random sampling. What is sampling variability? Sampling variability is how much an estimate varies between samples. Variability is another name for range. Variability between samples indicates the range of values differs between the samples. Sampling variability is often written in terms of a statistic. The variance and the standard deviation are common measures of variability. You might also see reference to the variability of a sample mean X bar, which is just another way of saying that the sample mean differs from sample to sample. Sampling variability only refers to a statistic, never a population. To make sense of a sampling variability, we ask, what would happen if we take many samples? Here's how to answer the question. Take a large number of samples from the same population. Calculate the statistic, such as the mean or the proportion for each sample. Make a graph of the values of the statistic and examine the distribution displayed in the graph for the shape, center, and spread, as well as any outliers or other deviations. So in that last example, you were supposed to pull chips out of a bag and see what the probability was of a specific color. So when Mr. Caldwell's class did the reaching for chips activity, his students produced graph that is shown in the graph below. Here's what the class said about its distribution of p hat values. The graph is roughly symmetric with a single peak at 0.5. The center, the mean of the sample proportion is 0.499. This is the balancing point of the distribution. The spread, or the standard deviation of the sample, was 0.112. So on average, the values of our sample means were about 0.112 away from the mean of all of them together. And there are no obvious outliers or other unusual features. Of course, the class only took 35 different simple random samples of 20 chips. There are many, many possible simple random samples of size 20 from a population of size 200. There's actually about 1.6 times 10 to the 27th samples that we could possibly take. If we take every one of those possible samples, calculate the possible values of p hat for each, graph all those p values, then we would actually have the sampling distribution. So you only have the sampling distribution if you find all possible samples of your sample size. The sampling distribution of a statistic is the distribution of values taken by the statistic in all possible samples of the same size from the same population. In practice, it's usually too difficult to take all possible samples of size n to obtain the actual sampling distribution of a statistic. Instead, we can use simulation to emulate the process and take many, many samples. So if you go to this video, it's going to give you a little bit more detailed instruction about what sampling distribution actually looks like. So if we take a look at this example, we use Fathom software to simulate choosing 500 simple random samples of size 20 from a population of 200 ships, where 100 of them are red and 100 of them are blue. The figure below is a dot plot of the values of p hat for the sample proportion of red ships from the 500 samples. Is this sampling distribution of p hat? This would only be a sampling distribution if we did all possible outcomes. Since this does not have all the possible samples, this is not a sampling distribution. Describe the distribution are there any obvious outliers? So in this graph, it is easy to see that it is roughly symmetric 
we can see that the center is around 0.5. And the spread of these values goes from, most of them are from about 0.25 to 0.75. The outlier in this case may be that 0.15, but that 0.8 probably would not be an outlier. Suppose your teacher prepares a bag of 200 chips and claims that half of them are red. A classmate takes a simple random sample of 20 chips and 17 of them are red. What would you conclude about your teacher's claim and you need to explain? So it's very unlikely to obtain a simple random sample of 20 chips and have our probability of getting a red chip, in this case with 17 out of 20, which is 85% of those. Um, it'd be very hard to get 85% being red if the population has 200 ships and half of them are actually red. This student's result gives us strong evidence against the teacher's claim. So 85 would put us right here. So that would be well above what we would expect based on this graph. So we would have to um, have an idea that maybe the teacher is not correct about the 50%. Strictly speaking, the sampling distribution is the ideal pattern that would emerge if we look at all possible samples of size 20 for a population of chips. A distribution obtains from simulating a smaller number of random samples, like 500 values of p hat in the previous example, is only an approximation to the sampling distribution. One of the uses of probability theory and statistics is to obtain sampling distributions without simulation. We'll get to this theory later. The interpretation of a sampling distribution is the same, however, whether we obtain it by simulation or by the mathematics of probability. So if we take a look in our sampling, our whole population, half are red, half are blue, you would take different samples of size 20. So we would take one sample here and we would see that they got 12 blue and eight red. So the probability of red would be 40%. You would take that data and you would plot it over here. We would take another sample of size 20. This time they got nine red and 11, sorry, nine blue and 11 red. So the probability of getting red is 55% and you would plot it in your distribution. And you would keep doing this for more and more samples. So in the above illustration, the process of choosing many random samples of 20 chips and finding the sample probability of red for each one. So again, you would take a bunch of different samples, find the probability, and then plot those together to make your sampling distribution. Follow the flow of the figure from the population on the left to choosing a simple random sample, find the p hat, and then collect all of those together. So again, we started with the whole population, we found the different samples, in each sample we found the p hat, and then we would graph those all together. The first sample had a p hat of 40%, the second one was 55, and the third one was 65%. The dot plot on the right then shows all of those 500 separate samples of 200, what those p hats were for each one of those. As the previous image shows, there are actually three distinct distributions involved when we sample repeatedly and measure a variable of interest. The population distribution gives the values of the variable for all the individuals in the population. So that was the 50% blue, 50% red. In this case, the individuals are 200 ships and 100 of them were red and 100 were blue. A parameter of interest would be P equals 50%. So each random sample that we take consists of now 20 chips. The distribution of sample data shows the values of the random color for the individuals in the sample. For each sample, we record a value of the statistic, in this case the p hat, for the sample proportion of red chips. And then finally, we collect all those p hats to make our sampling distribution. You need to be cautious. The population distribution and the distribution of sample data describes individuals. A sampling distribution describes how a statistic varies in many samples for the po entire population. Now when you go to take your AP exam, 
Terminology matters. Don't say sample distribution when you mean sampling distribution. You will lose credit on free response questions if you misuse the statistical terms. So let's check our understanding. The Mars Incorporated Company says that the mix of colors in an M&M's milk chocolate candies is 25% blue, 20% orange, 16% green, 14% yellow, 13% red, and 13% brown. Assume that the company's claim is true. We want to examine the proportion of orange candies in a repeated random sample of 50 candies. Graph the population distribution. Identify the individuals, the variable, and the parameter of interest. Now we are talking about the entire population. So this is where you would go back to what they say about the entire population. So that 24% blue, 20% orange. So we could graph a histogram that shows of the entire population, 24% are blue, 20% are orange, 16% are green, 14 are yellow, and 13 are red and brown. In this case, the individuals are the M&M chocolate candies. The variable that we're looking at is the color, and the parameter of interest is the proportion of, in this case, we're gonna be looking at which ones are orange, M&Ms. Imagine taking a simple random sample of 50 M&Ms. Make a graph showing a possible distribution of the sample data. Give the value of the appropriate statistic in this sample. So for example, we could take a sample of 50 M&Ms and we could say that we got 11 of them were orange. We could say how many we got were blue out of the 50, how many were orange, how many were green, yellow, red, and brown. So if we say in our sample we had 11 orange ones, that would be 11 out of 50, which would give us a p hat of 0.22. Now remember, this does need to be a p hat because we are looking at the proportion of a sample, not the entire population. Which of the following graphs could be used to approximate the sampling distribution of the statistic? Explain your choice. So if we look at these different ones, we know that the proportion of orange in the entire population is 20%. So your p hat should also be close to 20% at the middle. Now we are looking at the proportion or the p hat from a bunch of samples. So we're not looking at the individual. We are actually looking at the proportion from different samples of size 50. Since we want the center to be around what the actual population is, the correct graph would be the one in the center.